Nursing Assistance Basic First Aid and Emergency Care. What is an emergency? Any condition that requires immediate medical attention to prevent a person from dying or having a permanent disability. What leads to an emergency? Accidents or conditions that affect breathing, circulation, or both. Emergency related terms. Respiratory arrest, breathing has stopped. Cardiac arrest, the heart has stopped beating. Clinical death, the person has no pulse or is not breathing. It is reversible. Biological death occurs if clinical death is not promptly reversed and it is not reversible. Responding to an emergency. Nursing assistance role, know your patients or residents. Make frequent contact with them. Be familiar with your patients or residents. Know their orientation. Are they alert? Alert to person, place, and time? Is the individual capable of self-care and or have they been found unresponsive? By reporting signs that seem unusual or give you cause for to alarm the nurse, you may prevent an emergency situation from developing. Nursing assistance responsibilities. Responsibilities of a nursing assistant in case of an emergency include recognizing that an emergency exists, deciding to act, check for consciousness of the resident, activate the EMS system or rapid response system, RRT, provide appropriate care until EMS or RRT personnel arrive, give accurate information and accurately document observations and actions. Basic life support measures. BLS. The goal of BLS is to prevent respiratory arrest, breathing stops, and prevent cardiac arrest where the heart stops beating or both. By using certain BLS measures, such as rescue breathing and CPR, you are essentially performing breathing and circulation for someone who is unable to perform these functions on her own. Clinical death is when a pulse, there's no pulse or breathing, and it can be reversed with prompt treatment. Biological death is death of brain tissue, and it is not reversible. BLS measures. The measures of BLS include rescue breathing, CPR, Automatic external defibrillator, AED, a do not resuscitate DNR status is important that you know. Know the wishes of your patient or resident before the incident occurs and follow your facility's policies. First aid and BLS training. Facilities may require training and certification. Most nursing assistant programs include training. There are periodic improvements to techniques in the training. If your program or facility does not provide training, seek out classes in your community. American Red Cross, National Safety Council, American Heart Association. Question 1. Emergencies usually occur with an accident which require BLS. True or false? False. Medical conditions can cause emergencies which can require the use of BLS, such as being unable to breathe or heart stops beating due to a chronic medical condition. Emergency situations. Heart attacks and strokes. Fainting, called syncope. Seizures. Hemorrhage, shock, foreign body airway obstruction. Emergency situations. Heart attack. When a person has a myocardial infarction, MI, the blood flow to the muscular wall of the heart is blocked and part of the heart muscle dies. The crippled heart muscle is unable to pump blood effectively throughout the body, creating an emergency situation, which is lack of blood flow to the heart can result in cardiac arrest. If a damaged area of the heart is large enough, cardiac arrest can occur. Prompt medical intervention can help them to minimize the damage of the heart muscle. Heart attack signs and symptoms. The signs and symptoms of a heart attack can vary greatly from one person to the next. The most typical symptoms include pain, pressure, tightness in the chest that may radiate to the arms, back, or neck, a pale or grayish color of skin, excessive sweating, trouble breathing, nausea, or heartburn-like pain. Heart attack, first aid. If you observe a person that's having signs or symptoms of a heart attack, have the person lie down. Raise the person's head to help the breathing easier and call the nurse or activate the EMS system immediately. If a person goes into respiratory or cardiac arrest, 
you will need to begin BLS. Emergency situation strokes. Strokes are also known as brain attacks or cerebral vascular accidents, CVAs, are caused by blocked blood vessel in the brain or by a blood vessel that suddenly ruptures. Blood supply to a part of the brain is cut off, causing that part of the brain to die. If you think that a person is having or had a stroke, report your observations to the nurse and activate the EMS system. Strokes, signs, and symptoms. A stroke might cause only a mild physical change in some people. In others, it might cause loss of consciousness or coma. Signs of a stroke include a change in a person's level of orientation or consciousness. It may cause slurred speech, muscle weakness, paralysis, tingling or numbness of an arm, leg, or side of the face, drooping of an eyelid or corner of the mouth, and severe headache. Strokes first aid. Keep the person lying down and watch for signs of respiratory arrest until advanced care arrives. New advances in the treatment of stroke have resulted in improved outcomes for some patients when treatment is started early. Emergency situations. Fainting. Fainting occurs when the blood supply to the brain suddenly decreases, resulting in temporary loss of consciousness. Although fainting may become an early sign of a med serious medical condition such as a heart problem, it can also be the result of hunger, low blood sugar, pain, extreme emotion, fatigue, medication side effects, a stuffy room, poor ventilation, excessive heat, or standing for a long period of time. Fainting is not life-threatening in itself, but a person who faints is at risk for injury from falling. Fainting first aid. If you believe a person is about to faint, have the person lie down in the supine position and elevate his legs 12 inches, or ask him to sit down and bend his head forward, placing his head between his knees. Loosen any restraints or tight clothing, such as a belt or necktie, and have the person remain in the supine or sitting position with his head between his legs for at least five minutes. Do not leave the person unattended. Use the call light if necessary to call the nurse. Fainting first aid. If a person you are assisting does faint, lower him to the floor or other flat surface, remembering to use good body mechanics. Position the person on his back with his head turned to the side in case he vomits. If you are sure that the person does not have any injuries to the head, neck, or spinal cord, you can raise his legs 12 inches and loosen any tight clothing or restraints. Make sure the person is breathing and call for help. Even if the person recovers from the episode, quickly, have him continue to lie down until the nurse arrives. Emergency situation seizures. Seizures, also known as convulsions, occur when the brain activity is interrupted. Seizures can result from head injuries, either recent or past. Strokes, they can arise from infections, high fevers, low blood sugar, poisonings, brain tubers, and epilepsy. Different types of seizures include grandma seizures and petty ma, which is called absence seizure. Seizures, signs and symptoms. Grandma seizures are characterized by generalized and violent contraction and relaxing of the body's muscles. During the petty mal seizure, absence of a seizure, the person may just stare into space or stop speaking in mid-sentence, only to come back a few moments later. First aid for seizures. First aid for a person having grandma seizure involves protecting the person until the seizure is over, keeping the airway open during the period of the unconsciousness time. Seizures first aid. If a person is having a grandma seizure, you would help the person to the floor and move furniture or any other objects that might cause injury out of the way. Protect the person's head by placing a pillow or folded towel underneath it and call for help while allowing the seizure to run its course. Never place anything in the person's mouth or between the teeth. The gag reflex may be temporary loss. Saliva may pool in the mouth. Place the person on their side and allow the secretions to drain from her mouth to prevent choking. Provide warmth and a quiet environment. Emergency situations hemorrhage. Hemorrhage is severe and uncontrolled bleeding. It can be caused by trauma to a blood vessel or by certain illnesses such as gastric ulcers. Signs of internal hemorrhage is when a person either vomits blood or passes blood through the rectum. Ordinarily, when a blood vessel wall is injured, a blood clot forms to prevent the escape of blood. 
If the trauma to the blood vessel wall is not substantial or if a person lacks the clotting factors needed to form the blood clots, the bleeding will not stop. Emergency Situations Hemorrhage Hemorrhage can be either external where it's visible, internal where it's within the body. It can either be venous or arterial, depending on the type of blood vessel that was injured. A venous hemorrhage flows steadily. Arterial hemorrhage spurts out blood. Uh, it pulses with the heartbeat. Hemorrhage first aid. In the event of an emergency situation where a person is hemorrhaging, call for help and make sure the person is lying down. Take standard precautions to protect yourself from exposure to blood-borne pathogens. Apply firm, steady pressure directly to the wound using a sterile dressing, a clean towel, or whatever else is clean and available for use as a compress. If the direct pressure does not stop or slow the flow of blood, Raise the affected body part, if it is an arm or leg, and apply pressure to the pulse point above the wound. Emergency Situations Shock Shock results when the organs and tissues of the body do not receive enough oxygen-rich blood. To treat shock, the underlying cause of the shock must be addressed. Emergency situations shock. Cardiogenic shock occurs when the heart is unable to pump enough blood through the body. Hemorrhagic shock is resulting from massive blood loss. Septic is caused by bacterial infections. And anaphylactic shock is caused by a severe allergic reaction. Shock signs and symptoms. A person is entering into a state of shock will have low blood pressure, a pulse that's rapid and weak, cool and clammy, pale skin, be confused or disoriented, breathe rapidly, and if he is conscious, he may complain of thirst. Shock first aid. Keep the person warm and calm. Treat the underlying cause of the shock. The treatment for anaphylactic shock is the immediate administration of a medication, epinephrine. Emergency situations. Foreign body airway obstruction. Types of obstruction, partial air obstruction with good air exchange is when a person coughs strongly and has good skin color. A partial obstruction with poor air exchange, the person is coughing, the cough will be weak and effective with a high-pitched crowing sound as he tries to breathe. He'll have bluish skin in color. Complete airway obstruction, the person cannot cough, speak, or breathe and might lose consciousness quickly. Emergency situations. First aid to be administered in the case of choking. Clearing the airway in adults and children older than one use abdominal thrusts. Chest thrusts are used on very heavy people or pregnant women. Clearing the airway in infants. In a children younger than one year, Abdominal thrusts are not used because of the risk of damaging the baby's internal organs. Instead, with an infant, using a combination of back blows and chest thrusts are used. The nursing assistant opens up the infant's airway by tilting the infant's head back and lifting up his chin. Question 2. Your first response as a nursing assistant in any emergency situation is to A. Call the nurse. B. Activate EMS, RRT. C. Evaluate the person's needs. D. Remain calm. D, remain calm as the answer. The first response of the nursing assistant is to remain calm so the situation can be appropriately evaluated and necessary steps can be carried out. Chain of survival. Chain of survival steps. Remain calm, recognize that an emergency situation exists, and activate EMS. Provide first responder care, basic first aid, including BLFs if applicable. Advanced medical interventions such as that provided by the EMT, a paramedic, a nurse, or a doctor must be provided. After the immediate crisis pass, hospital care may be needed to help the person survive. Rehabilitation, the final step in the chain of survival, focuses on improving the general health of a person. Chain of survival. As a nursing assistant, you play a vital role in helping to see a person through the immediate crisis. Points one and two. You might find yourself caring for someone who is in the recovery phase, points four and five. The quicker an individual receives adequate and proper emergency care, the better the chances of surviving and having only 
permanent disabilities. True or false? False. The quicker an individual receives adequate and proper emergency care, the better the chances are of surviving and not having permanent disabilities.